Hey everybody, Dan here, Ultimate Boston Red Sox Collector page on Facebook and YouTube videos. So today I am doing a video on my mail day. Um, I didn't have any mail yesterday, I did not do a video yesterday. And while I have a great mail day, mail day today, um, including a trade with a fellow YouTuber, um, I have something really I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed and don't even want to share this because it was a really, really dumb thing to do. But I have to share it because I know that uh, some of you are going to be like, oh my goodness, why did you do that? Or they're going to be sympathetic, but I think more people are going to be like, you're screw up, dude. Oh, anyway, uh, I'm going to start off with the bad news. So last night... I, or yesterday during the day, I was entering, I did a video the other day, I would gotten a bunch of random um, Red Sox schedules in the mail, and I was doing a spreadsheet um, upstairs on my wife's computer, and I figured out a way through with Open Office, which I had not been able to figure out before, of a way that you could create a hyperlink. Um, it, I was, my wife has a fairly new printer with a scanner, and I was scanning them in. And I figured out a way using hyperlinks to go ahead and put a link to each photo. So I thought that would be a new thing I might try to do with some of my memorabilia uh, for insurance purposes and just so I can look at a picture when I'm looking something up instead of trying to find the description and making sure it's the right thing. Um, so I started with a spreadsheet. I just uh, typed in the ones that I had. I think I had 19 records on that spreadsheet. Well, what was happening as I was doing it is that some of the um, items were basically getting copied twice or saved twice onto my um, onto my flash drive, and I noticed this very early in the going. But so when I'm done, I'll go back and I'll delete uh, the the duplicates. You know, I basically what I did is I. Um, I put they, these all would fit into nine pocket pages, so I was going to put them in nine pocket pages and label them. And in order on the spreadsheet was going to be the number of the line on the spreadsheet was going to be the number of the photo. So, for example, line two, which was the first schedule that I did, was going to be photo was just going to be simply named two. Keep it simple rather than trying to name it, you know, Tim Wakefield 2006, you know, whoever on the back. So when I got done, um, I, I did most of them in the morning yesterday, and then I got sidetracked. It was my daughter's birthday yesterday, so we had a, her side of the family came over for some pizza and presents and cake, and, um, and then we were playing with her last night. And then when we were getting ready for bed, I decided that uh, after we put my daughter to bed, I decided I would finish. I had about three or four left to scan in and to put the links on. So I went ahead and finished that, and I was tired. And never do important stuff when you're tired. Most of you probably can figure out where this video might be heading right now, but uh, long story short, I when I was done scanning in the glasses, I'm going to go ahead and delete the duplicate photos. Well, because of the way that I numbered all of the items, I numbered them basically 2 through 19, those were the first items showing on the list of items on my flash drive. And I, at some point, apparently hit select all on my flash drive, all of my files on my flash drive. And I went back and I took off the ones that I was going to, the good ones that I was going to keep. Well, again, I was tired and really not thinking all that clearly. and went ahead and, you know, unselected all the ones that I wanted to keep, and then I hit the delete button. I don't remember getting a, hey, dummy, you sure you want to do this? I didn't, don't remember getting the warning. Well, what I had done is select it all, including my baseball card spreadsheet with over 27,000 cards on it my newly constructed magazine spreadsheet with over 700 magazines and several other open office documents that I didn't use a lot, but were nice to have on there. And as soon as I did it and realized what it showed what was left on my 
E drive in this case, and I immediately started to panic. And unfortunately, after spending about two and a half hours last night trying to download programs that would allow me to retrieve them, uh, and then calling a local computer shop that I've dealt with on and off for over 20 years that actually just retrieved a bunch of photos from one of my wife's um, jump drives successfully. I called them first thing this morning. I brought it over this morning. Um, went back this afternoon. No luck. Apparently the files got corrupted somehow when they were deleted. And $300 later, I have no files. My complete card inventory is gone. And it's my own fault. Um, I'm really bummed out about that. Um, I did not have it on a Google spreadsheet. I, I did find a Google spreadsheet. I went on afterwards, but it only has about 18,000 of the cards. And quite honestly, it's gonna take me longer to go back through and try to update that accurately than if I just start over. I did send, I think, a copy of the spreadsheet to my work email address. Um, I'm gonna check that Monday, but again, that would not be accurate either. It'd probably be from a few months ago, but that would at least be a little better. The magazine one is gone. I just finished updating that literally on, on Wednesday. That That is gone. Um, literally the M on the title was cut off when we did ret were able to retrieve them, but the uh, we were able to find the magazine file, but um, the M was missing, so it was just Agazines. And he said, there's nothing you can do. He says, I could send this out if you want to spend $1,500. And I just laughed at him. Hundreds, if not more than a thousand hours of cataloging gone and $300 poor, which is really, really frustrating. Um, but it is what it is. It happened. It's not a good thing. But I'm going to start over because that's what I do. I'm going to... Um, I may use Trading Card Database, honestly, because I think it would be a lot quicker. I can go in and search by team and then do a year and then literally pull up all the cards from that year and just check off the boxes. And I really think that would be a lot quicker. And it would also give me a value, so to speak, for the, for the collection. So um, I think I'm thinking that's what I'm going to do. I just I just can't do this. This would be the third time that I've had to redo this spreadsheet and you know, you'd think I'd learn by now the cloud, Google Sheets, put it on there, keep it updated, but just really dumb on my part. Um, I'm not looking for any sympathy, trust me. I'm just telling people, warning people, USB drives are garbage. They really are. How I could delete them and then somehow retrieve the files, but they're completely corrupted, I just don't understand. They worked fine off the zip drives. I've tried everything. They tried everything short of sending it out and, and really putting some money into it. I'm just not, I'm not going to spend that kind of money on it. It's not worth it. it. It's not worth it. Not worth that much. Um, and being out 300 bucks and getting nothing in return is really a bummer, but I got to deal with it. So just a f reminder to everybody, back up your backups and back those up too, because I'm sitting here thinking I'm an idiot and I messed up and now I'm going to pay the price. And that price is going to be countless more hours sitting in front of this computer cataloging. And uh, that frustrates me. I don't even want to think about doing it. I really don't. Even my magazines was 700. I really don't even want to do it again. I don't, but I want a list. So that's shame on me. Maybe by some miracle, somehow I'll be able to retrieve them someday, but I just... I don't see it happening. So that's my bad news. And now that I've talked about that for almost nine minutes now, I'm going to get into today's mail day because I did get some really nice stuff in the mail today. I'm going to start out with a trade that I made from a fellow YouTuber. I hope he doesn't mind me throwing his name out there as Josh. I won't say the last name just to be, you know, but he did send me a note. I already opened it. I wasn't thinking that it was a trade. I would have waited to pull it out and look at it on here. But it says, thanks for the great trade, Dan. Threw in a few extras that I thought you might like. Go Red Sox, Josh. So I'm going to put that with my one other note from my care package that I received. Um, so the two cards that I asked for, he um, I traded him a Brockholt autograph card. Um, 
that I had gotten in a care package prior that I already had. And I don't feel bad about talking about it because John Wade Box fan is the one who sent it to me and he told me, you know, just keep it. I'll send you the other one. So I used that to get a, a few more cards and he sent me some pictures of some cards that he had. And there were only two in there that I could see that I didn't have that caught my eye. These were the two cards right here. The first one is a 2014 Bowman is back uh, redo of the 89 Bowman. I did not have the Mookie Betts, so I was happy to get this one. And the other card was, I believe this is 2003. Let me just check it. 2003 Topps Gallery. It's Kyle Stromsky, but it's the artist proof. It's like the foil variation. You can't really tell. It's kind of like a refractor type of card. Um, I only had one from that set of a refractor. So those were the two cards I wanted. And Josh went above and beyond and, you know, told me when he emailed me that he was sending a few extra cards and um, very cool extras. This is a 2014 Mookie Betts Future is Now card. I have, uh, I have this card already. I have uh, a few duplicates of it as well. But uh, that's always something I can use for a trade down the road too. And then I sent a couple of autograph cards up. I'd look on my spreadsheet, tell you if I had them, but we won't rehash that. All right, this is a 2008 Stadium Club, Justin Masterson. May or may not have that one, I can't remember, but very cool nevertheless. And this one is a 2015 Bowman Sam Travis uh, autograph card. Um, again, I'll have to check my binders for those two, but very cool. If I don't need them, then I can pay it forward to somebody else and maybe pick up some other things that I, that I want for my collection. So thank you so much, Josh. Uh, Josh comments on a lot of my videos. Um, I'm honestly not sure if he does content or not, but um, actually, no, I haven't seen any from him, but a uh, big shout out to Josh. Uh, thank you very much for the cards. I really appreciate them. Uh, great, great care package. Um, I consider it a care package, even though it was a trade, because I think I ended up doing a little bit better in the trade, especially if I need those two autograph cards. So very cool. Thank you again, Josh. Uh, next item I'm going to show today, um, this was a, well, actually let me show these two, and while we're on the subject of Wade Boggs fan, John, I picked this nice Red Sox Threads card from 2001 of Wade Boggs. I missed out on a Clemens, uh, somebody had the Clemens card that ended later that same night, and it only ended up going for $2 and change. He ended the auction really late, it was between 11.30 and midnight. Eastern time, and I, I wanted to place a bid before I went to bed, and I forgot, and I saw the ending price the next day, and was just bummed, because I would have loved to have gotten it at that price, but uh, nice Wade Boggs card for the collection, and this is one from 2020's Top Series 2, this is the Black Border 35th Anniversary card, this is numbered to 199, uh, real nice card, really nicely centered, nice image of Boggs, um, probably from 1985, the image, uh, definitely a younger Boggs, but a cool card, so a couple of nice additions there. Uh, next item that I got was a, I mentioned in one of my previous videos that I was trying to fill some holes in my magazine collection, and with over 700, you'd say holes, really, but I actually was looking through it. I did not have any programs from the 1989 Red Sox, so I found a seller who had all three of them, this first, second, and third edition. This is the first edition, 89, with Joe Morgan on the cover. Uh, second edition, this is with just Fenway Park. And the third edition, which featured uh, Dwight Evans and it looks like Greenwell. No, just Dwight Evans. So, um, And ironically, the catcher right there is Mr. Carlton Fisk, number 27. So that actually, you know what? 27. He was 72 with the White Sox. So I don't think that is Carlton Fisk. Might be a different team. I can't even tell. I jumped the gun on that one. Sorry. So that was a nice buy it now or best offer and free shipping. I offered about $2 less than what he was asking. He took it. And these actually were part of the lot as well. This is just a pin from 1989. It's one I don't happen to have, just a logo pin, but it will be a nice addition to my pin collection. And this is something I did not have. And I was watching an auction um, that was up on eBay for several months and got no activity. It was 35 to 40. Um, they gave these out to their, their Christmas ornaments. They used to give these out to the season ticket holders, and I thought they were a lot bigger than this. Um, but uh, very nice. It needs to be polished a little bit or you know, get the fingerprints off. But it's just a little base, and it has um, Yaz, Dor, Cronin, and Williams in the corner. And this is from 1989. This is Merry Christmas from the Boston Red Sox on the back. So these are cool. As far as I know, these were season ticket holder exclusives. These were not sold. Um, I'm hoping, I think I still have that auction 
I think it's the seller just stopped with it at this point. I don't think they ever sold it. So let me reach out to them because these are kind of neat and they'll be a little easier to display than I thought. If they're flat like this, I can put them in pin cases or something. And if the ornament, if the hole is right there, I can just stick a tack in there without damaging it to hold them in place. So nice lot for eight bucks. I'll take that all day long. Uh, next thing I got today, very cool little booklet. It's a Major League Baseball Facts and Figures and Official Rules. It's from 1943 and features Mr. Ted Williams on the cover. It's in a really nice condition. Sour did a really good job packaging it. The spine is all intact. Um, it's still in the little bag. I'm probably going to leave it in there. Um, that could possibly fit in some of my smaller binders that I have. Um, I guess one good thing about my magazine, the way that I did my spreadsheet with numbering the books, I, I can take the books and it should go a little quicker this time, but it's still a lot of typing and a lot of work. So that's a nice booklet. I think I paid $6 for it and it was $3 for shipping. So I'll take, take that for under $10 any day, something that's um, almost 80 years old now. So very cool. And the last item I'm going to show is something that I've been waiting for for probably close to two weeks now. And this is my first... So a couple firsts, the ornament is a first for me. And this is my first ever booklet card. Um, I've seen a lot of these, I've missed out on a few, and I've always wanted to get one of these. They're really cool and I'm anxious to get a holder to put it in to display it. But it's a great player. It's National Treasures Panini and it's number 23 of 25. Let me see what the year is on this. This is 2015 and it's Mr. David Ortiz, Big Poppy. Really sweet. I love this card. Four piece jersey. Sorry, you're not going to get a good picture here unless I hold it up a little bit more. But it's two bats and two jersey swatches. And again, number 23 of 25. Super cool card. I definitely want to get a booklet holder to put that in because that is really sweet. That's my first one of those. And who better to get than David Ortiz? Um, they make a lot of the old time players in these booklet cards as well. So I definitely will look to get one of those at some point too. So that's my video for today. Um, I wanted to get the bad news out of the way first and end with some really great stuff. Um, more stuff for the collection. Uh, I've got a mess going on behind me. I finally got to the hobby shop and got some ball cubes. Um, I'm probably going to try to, that's the next thing I'm working on doing inventory of. Um, I'm going to see about uh, putting some pictures with them as well. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that or not. Uh, it's going to be very time consuming, but I got a lot of time consuming projects now ahead of me. Um, and uh, I really want to tackle my memorabilia, maybe even before I do the cards. The trading card database, if I did a binder a night, I don't think it would take me that long because of the way that they're set up on there. It's a lot quicker than typing them all in. So we'll, we'll play it by ear, see what I'm going to do. But uh, yeah, I... Uh, Definitely, definitely bummed out about what happened. But again, my own fault, not looking for sympathy. Just take it as a friendly reminder to back up everything and back up your backups and don't work on stuff that's important when you're tired. I'm still exhausted today. I have beady little eyes anyway, but you probably can see it. My daughter's birthday was yesterday. Today is just kind of a mope around the house day and moping is about as good a word as I could come up with today. I am moping today. And tomorrow we have her birthday party um, with some of her kids from her from her school, from friends that she hasn't seen for pushing four months now. Um, we're going to be taking all the precautions um, and uh, we went back and forth about doing it and we told people, look, we're going to do it. And if you want to come, great. If you don't feel comfortable coming, we completely understand. And um, we get a pretty good turnout expected. When I say that, you know, it might be a dozen kids, but uh, you know, the siblings and parents and everything else too. So it should be fun, but we're going to be, we're going to be safe and take precautions as well. So um, that's all I have. Um, I'm pushing 20 minutes here. So I appreciate, I've, I've added a few new subscribers. So thank you to all of those of you who are subscribing. My views have been going up. Uh, seem to be getting more comments. So I appreciate all that. I really do. Again, I, I told, I said a month ago, I was done caring about subscribers, but it always is nice to see a little bump. Um, and uh, I, you know, hope to get more, you know, but uh, this video, consider it a public service message about don't be, don't be dumb like me and work when you're exhausted and 
do something stupid that you can't get back. So that's all I got. I'm going to cut this now because it's 20 minutes. Have a great night, everybody. We'll talk to you again soon. Take care.